Hi, everybody, and welcome to the April Lymphedema Patient Roundtable hosted by LymphoPress. My name is Alexa. I am the Marketing and Communications Associate here at LymphoPress, as well as a primary lymphedema patient myself. And we are so pumped you're here with us tonight. While we wait for everybody to log on and chime in in the chat, uh, what your name is, where you're logging in from, I'm going to introduce our panel of patients and professionals. So we have Angela Jones, lipolymphedema patient and health coach. We have Katherine Rosenberg, pediatric cancer survivor, secondary lymphedema patient, advocate, and math teacher, but spring break now, so no math no, 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 no. no. Okay. okay. We're back. We'll do the bit. You can have math questions. <laughs> we're, we're back. We went back to school yesterday. Oh, oh. God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> My condolences. Math questions to Catherine, our math teacher. We've got Karen Ashforth, certified lymphedema therapist and fibrosis queen. And we have a very special guest tonight. You probably already know her from social media. It is the lovely Veronica Sinirez. You might know her as Lymphy Strong, but she's here tonight as her role as Patient Services Director at Lymphatic Education Research Network. And she's gonna talk to us for a little bit about LEARN's new resource center, which we're super excited about because we constantly get the questions during the round table. How do I find a therapist? Where do I get treatment? Why is it so hard to find somebody to help me? And Veronica is here to tell us how we can all find those answers. And LymphoPress is a really proud sponsor of the Resource Center too. So we're especially happy to have Veronica with us tonight. So I'm going to stop rambling for a moment, but I gotta say my little housekeeping reminders, Q&A, Put it in the Q&A box if you have any questions for us. We'll get to them about halfway through the evening, as well as the questions from last month that we ran out of time for. And gentle reminder that we cannot give you personal medical advice, but we will answer from our own experience. And we've got Karen here to answer any general medical questions, and we love to lean on her for those. So um, we're going to get started. Veronica, thank you for being here tonight, our lovely Texan lady. <laughs> Thank you so much for the kind introduction. I'm so happy to be with the Lympha Press Lymphedema Roundtable panel and uh, forum. It, it's always a great gang here. I, I've been here, I think, two or three times before, and always a wonderful experience to be with everyone and to hear everyone share uh, they're living with lymphedema and their support questions and just the general uh, bonding and com camaraderie that comes with sharing um, our experiences in living with this disease. So that being said, at LEARN at the Lymphatic Education and Research Network, we are thrilled and very grateful to have had LymphoPress sponsor uh, what's known now as our LEARN Resource Center. The Learn Resource Center was launched in November of 2023, uh, and the planning before it actually began, began the year prior. So uh, in preparation for that, uh, Learn added myself, my role as patient services director, and then we moved on to create the LRC. And the LRC is meant to help any patient um, that has a lymphatic disease, whether it be lymphedema, lipedema, or lymphatic anomalies, uh, their, their caregivers or families, um, uh, healthcare professionals, and also anyone who suspects that they may have a lymphatic disease. Um, while I can talk to the cows come home here in Texas, <laughs> I <laughs> yes. thought I would just go ahead and launch our really beautiful website and just share my screen really quickly here because everything is just nice and packaged really nicely um, on our website. So please let me know if you can see that. Yes, in your lovely pink framing. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite color. <laughs> Okay, so if you go to lymphaticnetwork.org, um, this is our homepage. Right across the banner here in the, in the middle is our Learn Resource Center. And of course it says connect with us for help on your journey with lymphedema, lipedema, and lymphatic anomalies. I click on that. And when we were crafting our page, it was very important for me as 
Uh, if you're not familiar with my story, uh, I have had uh, bilateral lymphedema. Uh, that means both legs. If you're newly diagnosed, uh, I'll, I'll expand on some, some of the terminology. Uh, that means lymphedema in both legs. I've had it for 30 years. Uh, and I'm third generation behind my father and grandfather. So my grandfather was bilateral too. And then my father had it a stage four in his left leg. Um, in our family's journey, um, it's been in our family for over a hundred years, total of six family members impacted, unfortunately. And so I'm very familiar with the scenario of uh, having a family member go from doctor to doctor, uh, no one knows what it is, you get the door slammed in your face, no treatment options, uh, going years, even decades without any answers, solutions, or any help whatsoever. So it was really written with that perspective in mind. And what we want our everyone to know is here at LEARN, we see you, we hear you, and we're proud to be a resource. You know, it's, uh, like I said, patients come to us, oftentimes uh, they've spent months or years searching for someone who understands, who speaks the language of lymph. Uh, you know, I've been swelling or I've been leaking or um, I have this issue and my primary doctor can't help me. Um, is there something that you can do or is there someone that you can refer me to? And, and that's what the Le Learn Resource Center is all about. Uh, so there are three ways to communicate with Learn. Um, you can submit an online uh, resource uh, form. You can call our 1-800 number and leave a voicemail or you can also download our Learn Resource Guide. And I'm gonna go very quickly through these three things. And then if anyone has any questions, by all means, feel free to ask. So our first uh, connection is through the online form. Here it is very, it's a very simple form. Um, you put your, for your name, your, uh, your email, your phone number, a lot of times uh, we have patients who actually want to talk to someone. Uh, I can spend upwards of an hour, sometimes even two hours speaking to patients on the phone as they share their story, as they share uh, the obstacles, treatments that they've tried, um, you know, compression they've tried. They want to, sometimes they want to know about, you know, pump options. All of that, I mean, really any of it is open. This is a free confidential service. So anything you share with me goes in the vault, sealed, never to be shared. Um, it, it's very private and also your data is never shared. We, we do not share our email list or anything like that. So again, it's patient to patient, um, unless of course, you know, I'm out for some reason. But um, you'll ask, you can fill out what resources you're interested in and then what type of stakeholder you are in our community. So we get uh, we get everything across the spectrum. Sometimes we get children of adult parents. Sometimes we get parents of kids with lymphedema, uh, patients, siblings of patients, uh, spouses, uh, social workers sometimes, I mean, it's really just open to everyone. And then you briefly describe your question for learn and submit it, kicks off an email to our queue, and then you receive either an email or a callback, depending on your preference. The 1-800 number resource line is for those individuals who want a callback uh, and want to speak to someone directly. As far as we know, it is the first 1-800 number for lymphatic patients in the history of the United States. So uh, we're hoping that you know other organizations follow suit. Um, we do get calls on this line. Often they are very emotional, um, and uh, because as as we all know, sometimes we get frustrated and uh, 
we're looking for answers and we just want to speak to someone um, in that time of, of looking for a solution. The third way is the, is the learn resource guide. So some of you may be familiar with our 10 things to know series at LEARN. Uh, this puts all of them in a consolidated format. And then it also talks about all of the services that are patient centric that LEARN offers. Again, LEARN never, pay, Learn never turns away a patient for their inability to pay for this information and it is all free. You know, sometimes people say, well, why should I become a sort of supporting member of LEARN? Um, you know, do I get a, a certificate or do I get a you know, some sort of item in return for becoming a member? Uh, the gift you give is the gift you pay it forward. Uh, this information is available for everyone. And uh, when you become a supporting member, like through the generosity of Limpa Press, then you empower countless innumerable people with the ability to uh, uh, access patient education, uh, like the symposium series, our centers of excellence, and all of these uh, other wonderful links that we have put together. So uh, top question that we get at the Learn Resource Center is where do I find a doctor? Where do I find a, a, a treatment center? That is the number one question I get hands down. And I answer it probably six, seven times a day. Uh, where we will refer you is the Learn Centers of Excellence. So this program started about, um, I want to say 2019, and it grew from uh, less than 10 centers to now 60, over 60 places around the world where you could get treatment. Now, the in order for a center to be listed here, they have to make an application and it is a very rigorous process. Um, there's a third party external global oversight committee. Uh, I'm sure uh, Karen Ashford is very familiar with you know, a lot of the, the experts on that panel. Um, we have varying degrees of designations, for example, a comprehensive center of excellence, uh, such as let's say Cleveland Clinic, well, is expected to provide the full spectrum of services. Uh, there are some centers that only offer uh, services to cancer survivors, if you survive cancer. Others are for pediatrics only. So that there's different uh, designations, but at all of these centers, you should be able to make an appointment there. And when you go to them and you say, I have lymphedema or I have lymphedema or a lymphatic issue, they will know what you're talking about. You won't get a, um, a door slammed in your face or we can't help you. Um, and then if you do visit a center of excellence, you're more than welcome to share your feedback on how that experience went at our patient survey. So, um, Second question that we get, second top second question, is how do I find a qualified lymphedema therapist? So again, here we go. We go down to find a local certified therapist. Click here. You can watch a video on all of the qualities uh, and qualifications um, on how to find a therapist tips for what to look for as far as certifications. All of the major schools are listed here and then the and, and then all of the therapist directories. So you have ACLES, Vodder, CLOSE, uh, Lymph Lymphedema Association of Ontario, the Norton School of Lymphatic Therapy and Pacific Therapy Education. And then we also have the LANA and NLAN directories listed as well. So all a patient has to do is plug in their zip code to these varying, you know, these different links, 
and they should be able to find, uh, hopefully, I mean, I know some of us live in more rural areas than others, but uh, we do provide all those links. And then you get some guidance on um, questions about credentials, what to expect in treatment and what to expect at your first visit. And as always, if you wanna make an appointment to speak to me through the phone and ask a little bit more detail about what to expect during complete decongestive therapy one-on-one, -on -one, I'm happy to speak with you about that uh, in general. And again, uh, as Lympho Press indicated, uh, it's not medical advice. It's just advice, anecdotal experience, um, anecdotal advice through shared experience of myself being a patient. Of course, everyone is different and has different types of lymphedema, so uh, it would be in the general sense, you know, of what to expect. So we have that. Uh, uh, back to. Um, as far as the Learn Video Symposia. We get all kinds of questions about, um, the other day, I got a question about, you know, swimming, swimming for lymphedema, what the benefits were. Well, we just had a symposium on the science of aqua, uh, aqua therapy for lymphedema. And I was able to put that person in touch with that, that video that, that was posted. So, uh, lots of, uh, information there for both lymphedema and lipedema. Last year, there was a five-part series done on lipedema by the folks uh, led by Catherine Dale and, and Leslie Keith. And then um, different types of other resources are listed here. Is anyone familiar with the Ask the Experts program we have at LEARN? Please tell us about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ask the Experts is, is a portal on, because I didn't know about it until I joined Learn. That's why I asked. Um, it's a portal. It's a patient portal where you create a, an account on our website. And there's a team of doctors like Dr. Granzo, Dr. Roxton, uh, uh, just different ones that volunteer their time. And as the questions roll into the expert panel, one of them just randomly picks a question and answers it. So if you have like a really tricky question and you don't want to talk to me because I'm not a clinician, I'm not a CLT, I'm not, I'm not a super, uh, super microsurgeon. Submit <laughs> <laughs> that question on ask the experts and get a response back via email. So that's another really um, nifty thing. And then of course you can join the chapter, share your story. Uh, Learns vir Virtual Expo has inf information on things like the lymph press pump and uh, uh, the different you know, compression garments, products and services that are associated with lymphatic disease. So we're getting into 10, ten things here. Um, but I, I think a lot of people are already familiar with that from seeing that on social. Uh, I went over the symposiums. I went over, uh, well, you can sign up for Learn Symphatic News. And then the global registry is really, really important. Um, this is where if you are interested in, in ever participating, um, in a clinical trial, or you want to get more involved on that side of research, you go into the global registry and you register for it. Uh, hey, you know, this explains it. Go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but we're getting a couple questions in the Q and A box about okay. finding garments, compression garments. Um, I don't want to jump ahead of your uh, run through here, but. Is there anything there too about finding um, a fitter for custom flat knit garments or any funding to assist with garments? Ah, uh, okay. So no, um, is, are there any reasons for finding a fitter for custom flat knit garments? No, we do not have that list. Mm -hmm. 
I will tell you though, um, maybe I'm speaking off the cuff here. But okay. there is, <laughs> we're casual here. I don't know how public this is because it's not associated with learn, but there is a project underway. And I learned about it at the Power Lymphatic Symposium that I just attended here in Las Vegas last month. Uh, there is a project underway that is currently consolidating a list of all the fitters oh, across the awesome. US. So I don't know when that will become available, but someone is where, and, and I don't know if I'm at liberty to share who is working on that, but um, yes, there is definitely a project underway and someone is working on that as we speak. Yeah. Um, so and Veronica, not to interrupt, but just to answer the other part of the question, which was uh, financial resources for assistance for garments. And the National Lymphedema Network does have a garment fund. And so if you work with a lymphedema therapist who is affiliated with the National Lymphedema Network, then they could submit an application on your behalf to be able to get funding for custom garments. Yes, and also, uh, so to answer the question as far as does LEARN provide financial assistance? No, uh, we do not for compression garments or pro uh, product supplies or for surgery. Um, our goal is to fund for research, but to Karen's point, you do have the NLN and then you also have uh, Ninjas Fighting Lymphedema as well mm -hmm. that will provide for adults. So those are two other resources in the community that offer uh, financial assistance for compression arms. Uh, okay, so going back here to the global registry. Corey, no, we do not. Uh, I have, in my nine years of being a patient advocate, I've only come across one Corey trained lymphedema therapist. So I don't know if that's because the schools have not reached out to the lymphatic community or um, where that gap is, but that was a really good question. Uh, the Pori community um, is not listed as, as a therapist resource. But like I said, uh, I've only met one CLT that is Pori trained. In my experience, I don't know if anyone else in the panel has. I'm not familiar with that designation. It's a it's an oncology uh, yeah. specialization. Uh, gotcha. Okay. Uh, what else? Okay, and then of course we have the resource guide. And like I said, the Learn Resource is Center is probably sponsored by Limfer Press. Uh, Many people ask me what I do as a patient services director. Uh, um, what I do is speak to patients all day, either via email or through phone or through Zoom. Uh, it is the best job that I've ever had in my life. Uh, it can be very emotional. I'm very proud to, uh, to uh, work on this and help fellow patients uh, navigate um, their journey. Uh, that being said, it is a, not uh, an end-all, be-all uh, resource. You know, we're there to get you started on your way, uh, but everyone's journey will be different because everyone's lymphedema and case is different. So, uh, and you know, if certain things don't work out. Don't be afraid to let us know, you know, provide feedback. Uh, we have an email. It's the LRC uh, lymphaticnetwork.org that you can submit and uh, reach out. Or again, if you want to reach out on the phone, I'm here. I have a very thick skin <laughs> for being on social media and being within the community for, for, you know, almost 10 years now. So Anything you know you want to share, uh, I will take it as critical 
feedback and, you know, we're just all trying to help someone at the end of the day and, and do our best. So that's all I have. If anyone has any questions, let me know. That's this amazing. is such great information, Veronica. And, you know, I've known you now for a number of years. I met you through Live Peace um, Strong. And um, I just have to tell everyone, this woman has the biggest heart. And if there's someone here that is tuning in for the first time and you're really wanting to get connected to resources, please reach out to Veronica because she is so knowledgeable as you've just found out. I mean, really, she's <laughs> tailor-made for your job. That means a lot. You're going to make me cry. Okay. No. <laughs> I hold you in such high esteem and regard for your expertise and all of your years of experience. It's, thank you. That's very kind of you to say. Yeah. Well, this was great information. I am so glad that you were able to share all of this. And um, I'm just going to put in a plug, Alexa. I hope we can have Veronica back again. Oh. Because she has such a wealth of information and resources. Yeah. And I think that it's it's good to, to remind people about the learn resources. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hope everybody is bookmarking. I was dropping the links in the chat, but these are all pages you want to bookmark and reference as much as possible because it's it is such a wealth of information and it's so nice to have a consolidated resource of all of this stuff because constantly, you know, how do I find a therapist? What, what, what do I even expect at therapy? You know, all these questions that we deal with, um, they're all right there, which is wonderful. And we're so grateful for thanks that. Thanks to Press. Oh, well, thanks to <laughs> your hard work putting all that together, which is wonderful. Well, we are getting so many questions in the chat and the Q&A box already. And we have questions from last month too, to get to. Um, so I, my head is spinning. I don't even know where to begin. But before we begin, I want to continue this theme of community and support and resources. And I'm going to put Angela on the spot because she shared uh, with me earlier over email kind of this serendipitous meeting of these other women with lymphedema that she had this week and what it sort of caused her to think about in terms of how we relate to our ourselves and our lymphedema. And Angela, I'm going to put you on the spot to talk about that, if you don't okay. mind. <laughs> okay. Um, earlier this week, I met three women, each with lymphedema. I didn't meet them at the same time. But their co the commonality other than the lymphedema was the fact that they are, were basically, and one stated, I'm consumed with this illness. And she said, that's all I can think about. I cannot think about anything else. And it made me think about so many times we're identifying ourselves according to what we have or where we are, or what we think. And I thought maybe it's a good idea to think about doing some things outside of the lymphedema, outside of the therapist, outside of the doctor. And, and so I thought maybe we should all look at some things that would be fun to do. Yesterday, I did something I love to do. I went kite flying, had a ball. I love kite flying and I went kite flying. That's in Arizona. So, you know, if I went kite flying in Arizona, it was special. And and so I also um, am part of a reader's theater group. So we do plays a couple of times a year. There are just any number of things you can do. It doesn't have to be with a group of people who have lymphedema or lipedema. It can just be with people. Just something to give you an aspect of, okay, I'm still the same person. I just have something I'm dealing with. So I would, I would suggest that... Um, a lot of us who are not doing anything other than focusing on our illness, that we look at what are some hobbies we like to do? What are some places we like to go? Don't do like I did and go on Etsy and put $500 worth of things in your shopping cart that you know you can't get just for fun, <laughs> but do some of the things that you really like to do or that you've been considering doing or something that's of interest, join a meetup group. It doesn't necessarily have to have anything to do with lymphedema, but just get outside yourself. Don't let the illness consume you. Don't let the illness be the only thing you think about day after day, because if that happens, you're going to have a lot more problems. You, you won't be able to cope with anything else when you need to. So that's all I had to say about that. I think that's great advice. And something that I, I struggle with a lot because my 
my day job is lymphedema related. I live with lymphedema. I, my blog is lymphedema. And it's like, I know Veronica, <laughs> she knows that, that grind. And so for a lot of us, it feels so hard to separate that from our identity because it's a part of so many aspects of our lives. But that's such a great reminder to get into some hobbies, you know, and, and meet some people and make some new, as an adult, it's hard to make new friends sometimes too. So meetup groups and things like that are a really great resource. Yeah. And depending um, on, on where you live, like here in Arizona, I consider Arizona a retirement state um, because so many people come down here certain parts of the year from other parts of the country because to get away from the weather or to get to the weather. So, um, a lot, a, a good resource would be like the community centers. Here, the community centers just have so many things, and it would be worth it to check into community centers and wherever you live to see what they offer. And most of the time, those activities are free. We have um, some people chiming in in the chat too. Sandy Darley says, "I'm a huge kite flyer. I have a kite in my purse at all times, which I love. I don't know the logistics of that." It's a maybe, I guess, a very compact kite or a big purse. Um, Adrian says, follow your passion. And Sandy also said, learn to laugh at your lymphedema. There's comedy in everything. Uh, people are telling you, Angela, great advice. So important to remember. And Patrice says, thanks for the idea of focusing outside of illness. It does help. And it does. Yolanda says she loves to swim. That's fantastic for lymphedema too. So double whammy of doing something good for your lymphedema and good for your soul too. So we love that. Very cool. Um, well, I love that little reminder. Um, we have some questions to get into as well. So I, I want to touch on some of the ones we got last month. There was one in particular that our fibrosis queen is uh, going to tackle for us. So we had gotten a question last month from Susan M who asked, Complete lymphatic drainage. Is it always very light touch? The therapist seems to press too light. When I do deep tissue massage in a lymphatic pattern, my whole body loses fluid, especially in my legs. The therapist doesn't get this result. Are there different types of lymphatic drainage? I love that question because we have to take a look at the history of lymphatic massage and um, teaching lymphatic massage. When I did my training over 20 years ago, I was taught that lymphatic massage was so light that it was almost like petting a bird. And times have changed because now we are really acknowledging that everyone with lymphedema has some sort of fibrosis, whether it's very, very undetectable or whether it's very severe. And so people who have lymphedema and fibrosis, and when I say fibrosis, I'm talking about tissue that is hard. So tissue that is not normally soft and flexible, but it's become thicker and harder. And in those cases, it's very important to gauge the amount of pressure so that you can move lymphatic fluid through those fibrotic areas. So now it is being taught and acknowledged in some, not all, of the lymphedema schools <clears throat> that lymphatic massage is not always just really light because that was depending on the fact that we were moving the surface lymphatics that were just under the skin. With fibrosis, we often have to use deep channels because the surface lymphatics can be um, compromised and not work as well. So the fact that you are getting better results with deep tissue massage tells me that you really need a deeper touch and that that's something to talk to your lymphedema therapist about. If they have difficulty with that, you may want to seek out another therapist because like I said, if, if I had never done any other reading or research or training, I'd still be petting birds. And that's just not effective for everybody. For someone with stage zero or stage one, that might work fine. But people who have stage two, where it's not reversible with elevation because of fibrosis, you have to use a firmer touch. 
So thank you for asking that question. I love talking about fibrosis. So thank you for letting me answer that. You're in luck because we actually got a question from another Karen, Karen Gillespie, who asked, how can I reduce fibrosis and can I reduce fibrosis over time? Oh my goodness. Well, <laughs> I could just spend days talking about that topic. I'm not sure I can give you a good answer in just a few minutes. I will say that there are many, many different methods for reducing fibrosis, everything from compression garments that might have a little texture to them that help to give a micro massage to the skin and help to increase circulation and soften some of that hardened skin. And then there's all sorts of therapeutic techniques. And again, this is where if you're working with a lymphedema therapist who doesn't know any techniques for fibrosis, you may need to see if you can find someone who has those skills because it's definitely a thing and it's definitely being taught. And there's manual therapy, there's all types of different um, modalities that can be used, light therapy, vibration, positive and negative pressure. Um, I can go on and on and on, but I think what I'll do is stop right here and just say that there is a lot of help out there and there are a lot of great tools and just keep searching till you find someone who has that know-how. I love that. We have to keep searching to find that know-how and with what Veronica shared at the beginning of the hour, there's a, a great uh, tool to help in that searching. So you can quickly find someone with that know-how, which is fantastic. <laughs> um, thank you for that answer. We got a, a question from Edwina who says, hi, has anyone experienced irregular periods potentially caused by having lymphedema? If so, how have you dealt with it? That's a really interesting question. Does anyone have any experience with that? or can it affect that? So lymphedema and hormones are related. Mm -hmm. And I think that that would be a good uh, question to start with your doctor and uh, talk about the irregular periods and maybe talk about balancing hormones. Um, because it can definitely be a thing, but I think that it's, it's a medical issue that um, should be addressed um, with your doctor as opposed to asking around because everyone is different. But yes, um, do seek out help for that. Awesome. We've got a question from Alana who asked, uh, she said, getting proper fitting garments is a huge challenge and insurance often does not pay. My tribute had five remakes. Are there any other night, are there, Sorry, are there other nighttime garments for advanced primary lymphedema? Yes, there are. We talk about night garments or um, uh, what, what Sarah Bramblett had a really good, uh, she doesn't call them night garments. She called them inactive compression. Was that what she said? And when she was here a few months ago as a designation, but um, the, the quilted uh, garments you usually wear at nighttime. Um, I wear a Medi Circade profile, which I've been pretty happy with after tribute for years and years. Um, but I, other Veronica, I saw you unmuted. Do you want to share on the topic? Oh, there's also the uh, for severe to moderate. There's also the Jovi Pack mm -hmm. by Jopes that is the thicker um, nighttime garment. So inelastic garments, Addy said in the chat. That's what I meant. Thank you. <laughs> inelastic also, garments. And, and, you know, I, I know the tribute, the tribute uh, and the Joby Pack and the Medi uh, product, all of those are uh, easier to don. But also don't forget about good old fashioned wrapping. Mm -hmm. Wrapping at night still works, you know, and sometimes you can really pack a punch Sometimes I'm surprised when I when I wrap again at night. Uh, you can really get a lot of bang for well, at least for me personally. Everyone's different, but uh, especially in the summertime, uh, if I go back to old fashioned wrapping, I really get a a, a lot of bang for my buck <laughs> overnight uh, with that. So don't discount that either. Uh, that option you can always revert back. 
There's a lot of different types of quilted garments out there. I saw someone in the chat mention the reed sleeve and um, Sigvaris is another uh, great company. And um, another question I saw in the chat was, are they custom? And you can get off the rack quilted garments. Um, but again, as Veronica mentioned, the quilted garments by themselves really don't give a lot of compression. And so it's what you put over it, whether it's wrapping it with a bandage or um, putting a, a Velcro wrap garment over it. And many of the quilted garments come with elastic sleeves that you can just pull right over and it's very fast and easy to put on. Um, I have to say, though, if you're kind of in boot camp and trying to get a really good reduction, you just can't beat bandaging over quilted. Great. Yeah, everybody's chiming in with what they wear at nighttime, the relax, reed sleeve, bandages. Uh, someone said that they wear a Una boot at night. Um, we got a few more questions in the Q&A box about fibrosis. You've You've triggered, you've opened up the, the well of fibrosis questions. So Karen is a happy clam tonight. Um, so there's a few, and I don't know if you see any in particular that jump out at you. Um, Sandy asks, is there a way to distinguish fibrosis from trigger points? Um, I'm not sure what, what that means, but Karen, I'm sure you probably... I would consider trigger points to not be fibrosis unless it's very chronic. A trigger point is a muscle spasm that is in a particular area. And uh, when I'm thinking of fibrosis, I'm thinking about an area of tissue that is hardened. And I see another question saying, um, how, do you, how can you tell if you have hard tissue? And the, the way that you can tell is if you compare it to a part of your body that's not affected by lymphedema. Let's talk just a little bit. I'm going to give you fibrosis 101. The most common type of fibrosis that people think of is scar tissue. We all have scars and most of them are nice and soft and flexible, but some of them are not. And some people tend towards hard keloid scars. So um, having fibrosis can range from being very mild to a, a thin, flexible fibrosis like a scar to something that is almost like super glue or someone took a staple gun and stapled through your tissues. That's what I see a lot when I have patients who have had many uh, instances of cellulitis. And um, that's why I'm so vigilant about talking about infection because if someone with lymphedema develops a cellulitis infection, because circulation tends to be slower with people with lymphedema, it's harder to get those infectious wastes out of the area and they turn into glue. So that's why it's so important after the infection is resolved to really um, decongest that area um, so that you don't develop a post-cellulitis fibrosis. But don't get me started. I mean, there's all <laughs> types of different types, radiation fibrosis, um, post-thrombotic fibrosis. Um, oh gosh, I could go on for hours. But um, the bottom line is uh, a lot of fibrosis is just very subtle, but if lymphedema progresses, it can get thicker and harder. And I'm here to tell people that we can prevent that. And there are ways to help to turn that around. We got um, another question on a topic that you also could speak forever about too, I feel. Um, anonymous attendee asked, um, pelvic girdle and genital lymphedema makes it difficult to put bandages on or any wrap for nocturnal voiding, especially for seniors, in order not to totally disrupt rest and quality sleep. So if not enough compression on its own, any other suggestions? So I guess the, yeah, looking for other options for genital lymphedema compression. Yeah, boy, and genital lymphedema can be so challenging. Mm -hmm. And um, what I love 
to recommend for gentle lymphedema for nightwear is um, a boxer type garment. And they do have, we were just talking about quilted compression. There are quilted boxers and you can pull a, a an elastic um, garment on top of that. And those can be pretty quick um, to get on and off. Um, so uh, that's a good option. And then I would also really um, consider that during the daytime that you do a lot of self manual lymphatic drainage, both in the genital area and the whole lower quadrants. And um, I have to put in a plug for the Lymphopress Lympha Pants because they are amazing for treating genital lymphedema, both male and female. And they have a focused genital chamber that is really, really effective. And I like to use those in conjunction with quilted compression because it really, oh my gosh, it's so effective for both reducing swelling and fibrosis. So get with your lymphedema therapist and talk about some of these options because there are lots and lots and lots of great options for genital lymphedema. Yeah, Addie just said in the chat too that they saw genital pads online to insert in the elastic boxers, mm -hmm. which is another great option too. That's awesome. Wonderful. Well, thank you for that. Uh, Christine wants to know, is fatigue common during CDT? A complete decongestive surgery. Well, she wrote DLT, which I don't know if that's a typo. Is that maybe a different acronym? I don't know. And I was being presumptuous, assuming you meant CDT, but. Christine, if you could just clarify that, because um, uh, that would be a great question to answer. So we'll wait for her to add to that question. Great. All right. Well, in the meantime, this is a good question. Maybe. Angela might like this one. Elizabeth asked, are there any diets or food suggestions to control lymphedema? If so, how does that work with the lymphedema? Um, I'm not sure there, I would say to control it so much as to just manage the overall situation. Um, low sugar. I don't eat a lot of sugar. I watch my carb intake. I eat a lot of fresh vegetables and a lot of fresh fruits. Um, and I tend to I tend to pay attention to how my body feels after I eat. It's not a specific diet. It's just what does it do for me when I eat it? How does it make me feel? Do I feel bad after I eat it? Do I feel okay after I eat it? Does my stomach get bloated after I eat it? Do my feet swell? So I would say you have to pay a lot of attention to whatever you eat and just eat in a way that, you know, keep down on the sugar, the salt, the processed foods, the really, really greasy, greasy foods. And uh, those are the things that I tend to pay attention to. I love I love that. And in addition, I would say that um, any kind of anti-inflammatory diet, and it can be very individual. Mm -hmm. For instance, I am allergic to lettuce. Mm -hmm. Who in the world is allergic to lettuce? But everyone kind of has their little things that can set them off and create inflammation. So as Angela mentioned, sugar and salt are biggies. But um, I would get with a nutritionist, talk to your lymphedema therapist. Um, a lot of people like the keto diet because it is a diuretic diet. Um, I love recommending the Whole30 diet to patients because that is an allergy elimination diet and has people eating very neutral foods um, that tend to not be inflaming and then adding so that you can discover what's going on. Or you can do some allergy testing and see if there are foods that specifically react in your situation. But anything that you can do that lowers inflammation, not only diet, but lifestyle factors, making sure you get enough sleep, getting enough exercise, working on stress and keeping that low. Those are all, I think, just as important as diet. I have to say, too, to piggyback off what Karen said, um, I have to keep in mind that just because a food is healthy doesn't mean it's healthy for me. A few years ago, I was I love apples and I, I like to explore apples. I want all kinds of apples. 
And I realized that after I would eat apples, my stomach would just swell and my feet would swell. So I had a food sensitivity test. And the first thing I saw on there that was inflammatory for me was apples. So it's a good idea if you can to get a food sensitivity test and it'll tell you a little bit about what may not, it's not an allergen, but it does cause inflammation in your body. And just because it's healthy does not mean it's healthy for everybody. Yeah, and that's such a good point. And there are a few books out there too, specific to um, nutrition and lymphedema. I know Chuck Ehrlich has one. Um, it, I think it's called the Lymphedema Nutrition Guide. Maybe I think it's something like if you Google it, you'll find. Uh, and then there's uh, there's a few. I'll put them in the chat if I can look them up real quick. But uh, if you search, there's a, a lot out there too, reputable books that have a lot more um, information and different suggestions too that, that could help in your journey to find what helps you. But um, definitely a good point that what is good for some per some people is not necessarily best for you. So it's like everything with life with lymphedema, trial and error, unfortunately. But uh yeah. I see that Christine um, just um, clarified CDT, and I'm going to read her whole question. Um, so thank you for clarifying that. Um, is fatigue common during CDT? And I would say it's an individual process, but for some people, it can be very energizing because you're losing all of this fluid and a lot of people feel lighter. And other people um, might feel more fatigued after receiving massage. Um, you're moving a lot of toxins through the body. Um, so I think just listen to your body and honor what it says. I know, I know when I haven't been to CDT for like a year, those first few sessions, I feel very tired. And then I hit a curve or a, I go over the hump. And then it becomes energizing and I feel good. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, oh, I, I did, uh, back to the genital lymphedema yeah. question. I did plug, uh, a, a learn symposium video that was done with, by Dr. Shirley DiCecco, who is a, a pelvic floor expert and genital lymphedema expert. And in that video, she goes over everything uh, down south, including some garments. So that may be a great educational piece for the person that asked about uh, the genital lymphedema. Great, thank you. And it's hard to believe, but we are already pretty close to the end of the hour. Um, and we were kind of thinking about doing something a little bit more hands-on tonight as we close the evening. Um, we were thinking, especially with all this talk about manual lymphatic drainage, uh, and we've been sitting here for the past hour together, we might need to move our lymph a little bit. And we were thinking about doing a little lymph drainage warm up with our lovely Karen Ashforth. Um, the obvious caveat is that MLD is a medical treatment and it's customized the individual patient by the lymphedema therapist. So what Karen's going to show us is just some of the, the core clearing techniques that's common to all people with swelling. So just sort of the, the general MLD kind of stuff that you do maybe before you'd pump or do the full MLD treatment. So um, if you all would like to do a group sesh together at the at the hands of our lovely Karen, uh, we, we were thinking that might be a fun thing to try. And then we'll save all the Q&A questions that we didn't get to tonight, which were so many for next month, but let's do this first. <laughs> That's great. Well, thank you. So I'm going to teach you what I teach all my lymphedema patients on the very first visit. And this is also what I teach all of my patients who use a pump because a lot of people think, oh, a pump is gonna do all the work. And no, we need to really prime the pump and get the whole lymphatic system moving. So we're gonna start up at the neck. And I want you to put your hands on your collarbones, find your collarbones, and then just go slightly above. I want you to use a comfortable pressure and just go back and forth or make some circles. And what we are doing right now is we are clearing 
the end of the line of the lymphatic system. This is where all the lymph that gets collected from the body, that's cleaned at the lymph nodes, this is where it dumps into the veins. This is called the supraclavicular fossa, and this is where the blood pressure is lowest so that the lymph won't reflux back from the veins into the lymphatic system. And I don't know about you guys, but I have really tight neck muscles. And I think that that can affect some of that circulation there. So this is a good reminder to all of us just to kind of pause for a moment and let ourselves relax. So after a couple of minutes of this, what I'd like you to do next is to put your hands over your belly button. And I want you to take a nice deep breath, either through your mouth or your nose, and then exhale completely. And if you're pushing out every bit of air, what you'll notice is when you take the next breath, you'll breathe in a little bit more deeply. Now, the reason I had you put your hand on top of your belly button is because ideally, if you're breathing using your diaphragm muscles, it's going to move your abdomen in and out. So when you breathe in, you can feel your, your hand being pushed out by the breath. And as you breathe out, you can feel your hand sink in towards your belly. Diaphragmatic breathing, if I taught only one thing, that's what I would teach. Because the lymph system does not have a central pump like the heart and the circulatory system. So the diaphragm, is about as good as it gets. And there's been a lot of research that has shown that when people start doing more deep diaphragmatic breathing and keep going, keep breathing, just because I'm talking doesn't mean I want you to stop because the more you can breathe from your diaphragm, the better your lymphatic circulation will be. It helps throughout the entire body. And for those of you who have lower body lymphedema, the diaphragm almost creates, I would say, like a wicking action to help that fluid move against gravity up where it can reach the nodes and become cleaned and then go through its cycle. So those are the first two steps. Now, the next steps are stimulating the regional lymph nodes. When I say regional lymph nodes, I mean the nodes that are responsible for taking care of all of the lymph fluid in that part of the body. So if you can imagine the body, first off, we're gonna divide it at the head. So we're gonna Start up here at the neck. Go ahead and just kind of give yourself a nice little neck massage because these lymph nodes drain the face, the entire head, the brain. So these are very, very important. Plus, it just feels good to kind of give yourself a little massage like this. So after a couple of minutes, we're going to move down. And the axillary lymph nodes are located in the armpits. And you can do one at a time. You can do the funky chicken, do both at the same time. There's all sorts of ways to do it. But even if you just do one side at a time, this is going to help to rev up and stimulate those lymph nodes so that they can do their job better. What are the function of the lymph nodes? It's to filter the lymph fluid and to clean it. What is the lymph fluid? It's the garbage system of the body. It's all the bacteria and viruses, 
all of the dead cells, and even cancer. So we really need our lymph systems to be moving properly so that we don't get all this garbage stuck. All right, so the last group of lymph nodes are in the groin. So if you place your hand in the crease when you're sitting in between your hip and your pelvis, that is the inguinal area. And it's a little hard for me to show you on camera, but if you can just do some gentle circles in that area, what I tell people is put your hands on your hip bones and aim your fingers towards your pubic bone and you'll be right in that angle. So those are the three sets of regional lymph nodes. And I'm going to add one more thing. And these are the deep abdominal lymph nodes. Now the diaphragm helps to stimulate those, but you can also place your hands on your tummy. And I tell people it's almost like you're kneading bread. You want to just gently go back and forth. And this helps to mobilize the lymph nodes around our digestion because the digestive system has the most lymph nodes of any other place in the body. So that's it. I love that. Thank you. I feel like I could take a nap now <laughs> after that. I could just listen to your voice and do MLD and I get so sleepy. That's wonderful. Thank you. I hope everybody in the audience is also feeling nice and moved. We're seeing some awesome, some thank you so muches. So we really love that, Karen. Thank you. That was really lovely. Let's do um, it again sometime. Yes, we could do it again next month. Um, everybody's loving it. That's great. Um, well, and with that, we are a minute past nine o'clock Eastern time. So we are here, as you know, every second Tuesday of every month at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you can't make it live, we still encourage you to register so you can get the replay to your email once I finish editing it and uploading it. Um, but uh, it'll also be up on our YouTube channel, the Lymphedema channel. So keep your eyes peeled for the replay and you can listen to Karen's lovely instruction anytime you want at that point. Um, so yeah, all right, everybody. We appreciate you being here. We're pumped you were with us. Veronica, thank you so much for being with us tonight too and sharing that lovely resource. We'll make sure to have all of those links in the replay email too, so you can save them to your bookmarks and get that information whenever you need it. And we will see you all on May 14th is our next one. So we'll see you then. Thanks everybody. Have a great evening. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>